Welcome to a tutorial on electronics and today we're going to discuss about the tunnel diode okay so as the name says this diode okay is of course a special type of PN junction diode that utilizes the phenomena of quantum mechanical tunneling in order to you know I mean in order for you know fast switching operations okay so before we move on to the details of this uh, diode device, I mean the tunnel diode that is, we would basically like to uh, discuss a little bit on quantum mechanical tunneling phenomena. Okay, so in this uh, uh, phenomena, that's the uh, quantum mechanical uh, tunneling that is, well, it, it just basically, you know, uh, was formed or rather, uh, you know, coined uh, back in the uh, 20th, uh, I mean, the, yeah, in the second decade of the uh, 19th century, and uh, utilizing the basic uh, principles of Heisenberg's uncertainty and uh, you know the Schrodinger's equation and such. So uh, this uh, you know uh, quantum mechanical tunneling uh, concept basically states that well, let's say if we have a uh, you know potential barrier, okay, so this uh, structure that I've just drawn over here. Uh, with this uh, blue line that is uh, this is basically a potential barrier so let this potential barrier uh, have a magnitude of about let's say vx where x of course represents the distance okay so if we have a potential barrier of magnitude vx and let's say onto its left the region be called a and onto its right the region be called a I uh, sorry there B uh, such that there would be a free electron okay so this is our free electron right over here so this free electron is present okay on the region a and now this free electron wants to pass over to the region B but since it has uh, I mean insufficient energy in order to surmount this energy barrier that's uh, this uh, barrier potential so this electron you know should remain confined within uh, the region A according to the concepts of classical mechanics but over here uh, I mean in this problem you know quantum mechanics or rather the concept of quantum mechanical tunneling gives us some hope for the electron okay to cross over this potential barrier without surmounting it Okay, so the concept of quantum mechanical tunneling just states that uh, there is, I mean, it's, since it's, uh, you know, uh, basically obtained from Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, okay, which basically states that, uh, you know, every particle in the universe has, you know, uh, some sort of, uh, you know, uh, finite probability of existing at each point. So it may be less, but there is a finite probability. So for this free electron, if we just apply at the same concept, okay, then this free electron does have a finite probability of remaining at this region B as it does for the region A. So its probability of being in the region B may be small, but it's not zero, okay. So now due to this, okay, it just basically uh, states that if we just look at it from some physical uh, phenomena, okay, it, the theory basically, uh, you know, makes us believe that this free electron could basically gain some sort of energy, okay, a minimum amount of energy from its surroundings, okay, so that it just, you know, uh, undergoes or rather, uh, you know, within a shorter probability of being in the region B would basically, you know, just tunnel through this barrier potential without actually surmounting it okay so that's the uh, you know phenomena of quantum mechanical tunneling okay so as I said that since this electron has a finite probability of being in the region B then uh, in order to do that the electron can basically pick up a little amount of you know a little uh, minimum amount of energy from its surroundings and it can basically get excited so that it could you know possess the qualities of you know basically going through the potential barrier and this phenomena has been experimentally verified and is of course the main uh, you know concept or rather principle used for uh, the tunnel diode okay 
So uh, this uh, free electron can basically pass through, you know, narrow uh, depletion regions. Okay, so if this width is quite narrow, then we can have a great deal of tunneling effect. But if we would increase this width, okay, if this width is increased, let's say I call this width, uh, you know, W. Okay, so if uh, this width is, you know, comparatively narrow, then we could have, you know, uh, a great deal of tunneling effect, as I said earlier. But if width is, you know, thick, then we okay there is of course a uh, lower probability of experiencing the uh, tunneling effect okay so that's why in case of the tunnel diode we keep the uh, I mean uh, the um, potential I mean the depletion region you know as thinner as possible okay so so here if I would like to show you what a tunnel diode would look like in real life okay so there you go that that's the picture so this uh, picture of uh, the tunnel diode is basically uh, uh, from the uh, number 1N2939. So that's uh, exactly uh, the batch number for this, you know, uh, tunnel diode. Okay, that's the product number. So uh, for this uh, tunnel diode, okay, we have a, uh, you know, similar circuit symbol over here okay and now whenever we uh, basically be using uh, tunnel diodes in uh, various electronic uh, circuit diagrams will basically represent it in somewhat this way okay so on this side uh, like a conventional uh, p injection diode so this side would represent the anode and the other one with the cat i, I mean that's with this uh, you know uh, bar symbol on would represent the cathode okay so uh, basically it's not much different from that of a uh, the symbol of a p normal p-n junction diode but uh, here it's you know bar symbol is modified a little bit with like something like a cap shaped structure okay so as I was talking about the uh, band structure uh, for the tunnel diode so we'll basically you know move right into it having discussed the necessary introductory details so here we go we have the band structure okay right here so as I said that in order to uh, you know have the tunneling phenomena we need to keep the uh, depletion region width in a tunnel diode as narrow as possible so that it doesn't face a wider amount of potential uh, barrier okay so otherwise the tunneling uh, I mean I mean the tunneling phenomena would you know uh, have a decreased probability of occurrence okay so in order to increase its probability of happening we basically uh, you know reduced down the depletion region width to about one hundredth okay we just uh, basically reduce it to by you know hundred times that of the depletion region width of a normal PN junction diode right over here. So we just reduce this depletion region width about a hundred times, uh, which is in the case of the tunnel diode. And it's basically, you know, doped, uh, you know, uh, with a great deal of uh, external atoms so that its uh, doping density uh, increases to about, you know, 5 multiplied by 10 to the power 19 uh, per centimeter cube. Okay, so this is basically the doping density which is of course about a thousand times higher than a heavily doped uh, normal p-n junction diode okay so now with that uh, I mean this sort of doping profile okay gives rise to a very narrow depletion region okay within a range of about 50 to 100 angstroms okay so now uh, that basically uh, causes the band diagram to appear somewhat like this you can see that in a normal diode, okay, the Fermi level basically, you know, exists um, exactly in the middle, okay, so that it's more uh, towards the um, conduction band uh, in the um, n-type side, okay, and more towards the valence band in the p-type side. So, in case of the tunnel diode, on the other hand, the Fermi level basically, you know, penetrates deep into the uh, valence band on the p-type side and into the conduction band on the n-type side. So now this basically uh, gives us an idea that the uh, semiconductor material uh, in order to construct a tunnel diode would basically become a degenerate semiconductor material. Okay. So now uh, if we would basically uh, move on to what would happen whenever we would basically uh, reverse bias and forward bias the tunnel diode. So let's say we start with uh, reverse biasing the uh, tunnel diode first. Okay, so there's the picture of what we're basically going to see. So here, uh, okay, I'll just write it down. Okay, so this is the condition of uh, reverse bias. Okay, so there you go. 
So whenever uh, the tunnel diode is basically uh, reverse biased, okay. So in this case, we'd basically be uh, experiencing an increase in the depletion region width. So you can see that this was the original depletion region width. That's the shorter arrow over here. And now, since it's being a reverse bias, the arrow mark has increased. So that's the new depletion region width right over here, marked in pink lines. Okay. So as you can see over here that these dotted uh, yellow line represents the level of the conduction uh, band. Okay that existed while it was not reverse biased okay and of course the blue dotted line also represents the uh, valence band level okay which existed when it was not forward biased as well so right now during this case uh, since it's forward biased the conduction band level and the valence band level both have dropped from each other uh, i mean from their previous uh, you know uh, levels you know quite significantly so that we can see over here that the uh, fermi level on uh, the side okay sorry there uh, better do it in white well uh, here it is so in this case as you can see uh, that um, due to a reverse biasing of the uh, tunnel diode over here okay the fer fermi level has basically you know uh, been broken okay it's not continuous as in the case of an unbiased tunnel diode as you can see over here but here what happened is that the Fermi level just you know broke down. Uh, I mean, yeah, the con the uh, you know continuity basically broke down, and now as we know that at zero Kelvin, uh, the Fermi level is of course the highest energy state that all electrons can occupy. So all the states below the Fermi level would be occupied at zero Kelvin. So let's say our tunnel diode exists at zero Kelvin temperature. So there we go on both the P and N sides. All the states below Fermi level are basically occupied. Okay. Oops, sorry, there I made a mistake. So there could not be any sort of you know uh, occupancy of the states in the uh, depletion region. Sorry for my mistake over there. So can kindly don't mind that. That. Okay. So now that's right. So that's set right. Okay. So now uh, over here, as you can see that uh, when this uh, should be the uh, you know actual uh, scenario then the fermi level on the uh, p type side okay would be higher than that at the n type side and now that would basically cause you know the electrons that are present in this uh, i mean within this fermi level okay on the p type side to flow through to the um, n type side where it encounters you know uh, vacant states right above the Fermi level in the n-type side. So here we would basically be having these electrons traveling towards the n-type side in order to occupy the free states. Okay, so that's what happens in the reverse bias condition. And this is how uh, the things would uh, change, I mean, uh, in terms of the band structure, that is, whenever uh, the tunnel diode is in the forward bias state over here. So as you can see, whenever we apply uh, the uh, forward bias uh, to a tunnel diode, okay, so this being the P and the N side respectively, we're having a positive potential at P and negative potential at N. Uh, while in the reverse bias condition, things were just the opposite. We had a negative potential at P and a positive potential at N. Okay, so now uh, during uh, the forward bias condition, we can see that, of course, the depletion region size, uh, or rather the width, basically, you know, decreases. As you can see, the, the shorter one is now, uh, between the two pink lines, is now the actual depletion region. That's a new one. Okay, so you can see that whenever we are basically energizing or providing external bias, the uh, conduction and the uh, valence band are basically, you know, uh, rising up from their initial uh, levels uh, denoted by you know the dotted uh, yellow and blue lines respectively okay and now the fermi level along with uh, the rising uh, of the i mean along with the conduction band basically you know rises upward so let's say if our uh, tunnel diode is basically at zero kelvin then again we know that all the states below that of the fermi level would be uh, i mean up to the fermi level basically would be filled up during uh, i mean at least at uh, zero kelvin temperature okay so now we have a condition where we can basically see that the Fermi level, uh, which is of course broken on the side of the uh, n-type uh, semiconductor is, uh, you know, quite higher than the Fermi level on the p-type side. Okay, so we can see a direct alignment between uh, the Fermi level on the n-type side and the empty states above the Fermi level 
in the uh, valence band on the p-type side. So basically all the electrons that are present over here in the uh, Fermi level towards the n-type side would basically be flowing into the uh, p-type region's valence band in order to occupy its, uh, you know, free uh, states, I mean the free states that are present over here, the unoccupied vacant states that are present over here which is of course in the same energy level as it is on the n-type side. So basically we'll be having a forward current in case of a tunnel diode as well as a reverse current. Okay, so that would basically uh, lead us to this characteristic right over here where we can basically see that we have a current in the reverse as well as in the forward direction. Here the current through a tunnel diode has been uh, you know, basically uh, depicted in, on the y-axis and the voltage across it, that's the bias voltage, is depicted on the x-axis as well. So we can see a, a reverse current right now over here I, as IR and we can see a forward current as IF uh, you know, extending or rather you know, flowing quite linearly with increasing and decreasing uh, voltages on either directions. But we can see this whole phenomena goes on with linear variation till a certain point that's denoted by IP or rather the peak current. And after that the uh, tunnel diode basically you know, enters into its negative resistance region okay so in this negative resistance region basically what happens is that with increasing voltage the current through the tunnel diode would basically decrease now this could be explained with the following graph in this diagram we can see I mean this is another band structure diagram we can basically see upon too much forward bias okay uh, what would happen is that when the uh, forward bias is, you know, basically very high, then the levels, that's the conduction and the valence band on both the sides would basically rise up a great deal so that there is complete de-alignment of the uh, Fermi levels on both the sides. As you can see that there is quite a huge amount of difference between them. So during this case, no electrons could basically, you know, flow uh, from one side to the other uh, through tunneling effect and basically common uh, or rather very ordinary uh, p-n junction diode operation takes place at this moment. So these are the things we would basically observe during this condition. Okay, so we have over here complete de-alignment of the uh, Fermi levels on both the sides due to too much of forward bias and that's why there is no tunneling effect. Okay, hence no tunneling effect and now due to this normal f diode operation takes over even if the forward voltage is increased. So here this basically you know, explains the characteristic where the current you know, continuously falls down. So if we just go on increasing the uh, forward bias voltage the current basically falls down due to de-alignment of their Fermi levels on both the sides. Okay and now at this point over here which is basically uh, known as the valley okay so here in this valley that's uh, the current uh, that's flowing through the tunnel diode is basically denoted by IV and after this valley point over here okay after this valley point the uh, you know normal diode operation takes place and you can see the similar PN junction diode curve okay so having said that we are only left uh, with little to discuss about the tunnel diode okay so I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial uh, and don't forget to watch us on our next tutorial as well. So till then, it'll be a short goodbye and thanks for watching.